Illinois faces some big challenges. Today, you're about to hear a truly honest analysis of the problems we face. Equally important, you'll also hear an in-depth discussion of some practical solutions. This is your radio source for stories, the insight, and the answers you won't hear anywhere else. Not on the media, and not coming from Springfield. You're listening to Illinois Rising, presented by the Illinois Opportunity Project. Now, here's your host, AM 560's Dan Proft. Welcome to another edition of Illinois Rising, Dan Proft, and with me is Joe Kaiser, producer of this show and writer for Illinois Policy Institute. And uh, the week that was in the mayor's race, and I can turn our sights away from the midterms to which uh, individual from the single party that runs Illinois and Chicago, the more of the same party, Mott's party, uh, will be selected mayor uh, in February and or April, assuming there's a runoff. There probably will be a runoff just because of the sheer volume of candidates. And a uh, new entrant, a couple of new entrants into the race this week. One, no surprise, she accidentally telegraphed it before she was reelected comptroller. That's former Madigan state representative turned Madigan comptroller, now Madigan mayoral candidate Susanna Mendoza. And then also a uh, state representative from the west side of Chicago, LaShawn Ford, while uh, a little-known uh, school principal named Troy LaRavier dropped out of the race, said he's not going to run. And there's all kinds of rumors circling about uh, the ability of even uh, candidates that have received a lot of pub because of nexus to celebrity like uh, Amara Enya, who's being backed by Chance the Rapper, as well as Kanye West, financed by both of them. There's questions about whether she can get on the ballot. So... Uh, before we uh, start to distill the race, uh, we may have to wait until the November 26th filing deadline to see who can actually pull together the first, clear the first hurdle by pulling together the requisite signatures. Uh, Susanna Mendoza entered the uh, foray uh, with this offering. Honey, I love you so much. As a kid, it wasn't my choice to leave the city, but after college, it was my choice to come back to try to make a difference. Because when I see a problem, I need to fix it. I just can't sit on the sideline. The job of mayor isn't for a caretaker. Every Chicagoan deserves a mayor who every waking moment, every day asks herself one fundamental question. Did I do enough? No matter what our challenge is, we can tackle them together. There is nothing we can't do. I'm Susana Mendoza and yes, I'm running for mayor. We can shape Chicago's future together let's get to work let's get to work joe um suzanne mendoza has been in office public office for more than a decade and whose signature accomplishment i believe is messing up the chicago city sticker by having it uh, by putting it out to contest and uh, selecting someone with gang affiliation as the winning artist yeah but now she's gonna get to work she's gonna roll up her sleeves because she can't sit on the sideline so she's gonna bring people together to get to i've never heard this message in a campaign before uh, by the get way, to work, can't send the sidelines, roll up her sleeves, let's get stuff done. Very nice job of stringing together those uh, bromides. Yeah. That's not easy to do. That it takes practice. Mm-hmm. Susanna Mendoza. She's said, had a lot of practice. Right. She's had more than a decade. You can see why mm-hmm. she could do it. That's just off the cuff for you. That's impressive. Yeah. All on. right. Let's see if uh, State Representative LaShawn Ford, friend of the show, has a more to offer than Susanna Mendoza. That's a low bar. LaShawn, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Thank you, Dan and Joe. I really appreciate it. Why did you decide to uh, enter this uh, mayoral contest as well? Well, I, you know, actually, the um, the contest actually honestly came to me, and I had lots of grassroots people from the child care industry, from the um, immigration movement, from the gay and lesbian community, the reentry community, all asked that I um, consider running. And I also had the West Side Black elected officials encourage me to consider running for uh, the mayor of the city of Chicago. So it really came from uh, the ground up, and um, I ultimately accepted the challenge to, um, to, to run for mayor. Well, how do you separate yourself from the rest of the field, regardless of the racial composition of uh, the candidates? I mean, in terms of what your value proposition is as a potential mayor of Chicago, how do you differentiate yourself? There's not one candidate in this race that understands the moral problem of the city of Chicago who has lived through the challenges that Chicago faces 
as it relates to criminal justice reform, as it relates to the problem with the opioids and heroin crises in um, in Chicago. Uh, no one can even begin to talk about the legislation that they passed and the um, the commitments that they've made to the people of Illinois through the work that they've done. You know, my work goes far and beyond the black community. It goes far and beyond any one community and any one party. And, you know, one of the uh, exciting things about running for the mayor of Chicago as a Democrat, it's really Chicago is a city that office is actually one that is really nonpartisan. And so we could work with Democrats, Republicans, independents um, in, in this in this city. And I think that's what it's going to take in order to put Chicago on track. I don't think um, Suzanne Mendoza, Tony Pertwinkle, Daly, Laurie, anybody would ever want to think to work with Republicans to make Chicago what it should be. So what do you think it is, you said no one, and you rattled off some of the names of the candidates there, no one understands the moral problem for the city like you do. What are these uh, other candidates, some of these are big names, Tony Preckwinkle, Susanna Mendoza, Bill Daly, what do you think it is that they're offering? Why do you think they're seeking uh, the the mayoral position? Well, you know, when you have these big offices, you have positions and you have relationships that you want to protect and you want to continue to keep people locked out of a, of a process, that infrastructure has to be uh, destroyed. We can no longer allow the Tony Pertwinkles, the Bill Daly's, and, and Suzanne Mendoza to continue to um, dictate the way our lives are run in this city. That has to end. Yeah, I think that's actually a great point you make. Uh, it's one that's underappreciated. Jeff Carter, who is uh, one of the Hyde Park Angels founders, venture capitalist, makes this point about HQ2, talking about Chicago and his blog, Points and Figures, why Chicago lost HQ2. And one of the points he makes, Chicago is a closed network, different than New York, yes. different than San Francisco. You look at the 600 people that were assembled to uh, put together the Amazon HQ2 proposal for Chicago, and it's all the same names, and they're all connected to one another, and there is no room for outsiders. And closed networks are not innovative networks, and that's why Chicago is languishing, not just with respect to losing HQ2, but in general. Yeah, and that's why people on the north side, people downtown, they pay for um, Tony Pertwinkle and, and Bill Daly's networks. And that, that just can't happen. I, have, I am totally, totally committed to Chicago being one Chicago and powered by people of all uh, races and all um, social economics because that's how we're going we're gonna to make it. I mean, people that's from a different party in Chicago, they pay lots of taxes to this city. And it's unfortunate they've been shut out of the process to make sure that their tax dollars are respected and that they're used properly. Speaking of tax dollars, uh, concurrent with this uh, losing HQ2 to no one's surprise except the feigned surprise of the ruling class, you had two Target stores on the south side announced that they are, well, Target announced that they're closing two stores on the south side, one at uh, 8500 block of South Cottage Grove in Chatham, the other, the 11, uh, 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 118th block of uh, South Marshfield in Morgan Park. Those two stores... $445,000 in property taxes, $308,000 in property taxes. Uh, compare that to two targets in uh, northwest Indiana paying $23,000 and $30,000 in property taxes, respectively. What are we going to do to make Chicago more attractive for business location and expansion as compared to our Midwestern neighbors? Yeah, good question. So Chicago, for one, is a beautiful city with lots of resources and lots of talent. So when you think about Target, I really hate the fact that we're going to lose Target, even though, and, and the fact that they receive a lot of TIF money. One, we have to clean up these communities and make sure that the city um, does its job. Now, it's bad that Target is leaving, but we have to look at this from a business standpoint. We have to ask ourselves, if you have a business that's making money in a community, Will they leave? I don't think businesses leave communities because they're racist. 
They leave businesses, because, leave communities because the bottom line. Yeah. Now, the city is responsible for target leaving. It has nothing to do with anything but the city of Chicago doing what's right so that Target feels that they can make a uh, profit in these communities and provide the best uh, retail merchandise in those communities. So the fact that they're leaving is a shame because the communities that they're leaving are underpopulated and they're not growing. So we have to make sure these communities where where Target and all the other community um, businesses have failed are able to survive. I remember opening a real estate company on the west side, and I went where no one would go. I went on 16th and Home, and I said, I'm going there. I know it's rough, but you know what? I'm going to go there, and I'm going to open my real estate company, one of the ones that I had, and I said, I'm going to plant trees. I'm going to do everything, and I'm going to bring the community up. But I had no support from the city. My business, ultimately, I kept it open, but it was very, very slow in that area because there was no support from the community. Target will never close over on Division near the old Cabrini area. It will never close. There's so much investment over in Cabrini. So it's unfortunate that Target is closing it's unfortunate that the residents in that area is going to lose a big chain, but it also sets up an opportunity for the city to support small businesses to fill in for that big box store. All right. He is LaShawn Ford. He's a state representative from the West Side who is in the mayoral sweepstakes, as it were, is running for mayor of the city of Chicago. LaShawn, where can people go to get more information about your campaign? Um, Ford, um, Ford for Chicago. Um, Dot com. Fordforchicago.com is the website. LaShawn Ford is the state representative and Chicago mayoral candidate. LaShawn, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Thank you, Daniel. Bye-bye.